bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh, Lord, we cast down our idols. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. We bow our hearts. We bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. Turn our eyes from evil things. Oh Lord, we cast down our idols. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, seeks your face. Oh God of Jacob, oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, seeks your face. Oh God. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be a generation Seeks your face, oh God of Jacob. Oh God, let us be a generation that sees. Seeks your face, oh God of Hello, everybody. Welcome to Monday of the 11th week of Ordinary Time, another week of Liturgy of the Word, another week of pondering God's Word. And we got some challenging ones coming up this week for us. And so thank you for joining me. Today is also the Feast of St. Romuald. Now, um, Romuald, uh, this is in the turn of the first millennium. He actually saw his father kill somebody, and it shocked him so much. I, I, I can't imagine such a thing. Uh, it shocked him so much, he ran off to the monastery and um, had his conversion experience over the whole thing. But he went to Cluny, which which wasn't quite Benedictine, uh, uh, strict enough for him. So he develops his own community called the Commodales. These are strict, strict, strict Benedictines, Commodales. I don't even know if they're in the United States at all, but uh, I know they're in Europe. And they still exist today. And I think Thomas Merton uh, was actually thinking of joining the Camaldolese somewhere along the way. They might have a they might have a community over in California. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, so we pray through his intercession today that we might be people of prayer. And and in our uh, emotionally healthy spirituality class, we're talking more and more and more about this this thing of daily prayer all the time. So maybe we'll get Saint Romuald to pray for us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A very challenging gospel for us today. Let's ask God for his mercy. And Lord Jesus, you call us to be a people of peace. Lord, have mercy. You call us to be a people of courage. Christ, have mercy. You call us to be a people who seeks the truth. Lord, have mercy. 
And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O God, who through St. Romuald renewed the manner of life of hermits in your church, grant that denying ourselves and following Jesus, we may merit to reach the heavenly realms on high. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as your fellow workers, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In acceptable time I heard you, and on that day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We cause no one to stumble in anything in order that no fault may be found with our ministry. On the contrary, in everything we commend ourselves as ministers of God through much endurance in infliction, hardships, constraints, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, vigils, fast, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, and the Holy Spirit, in unfeigned love, in truthful speech, in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness at the right and at the left, through glory and dishonor, insult and praise. We are treated as deceivers and yet are truthful as unrecognized and yet acknowledged as dying and behold we live as chastised and yet not put to death as sorrowful yet always rejoicing as poor yet enriching many as having nothing yet possessing all things the word of the lord the lord has revealed the song for he has done wondrous deeds his right hand has won victory for him his holy arm of the nations he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song. Sing praise. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. 
But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other one as well. Someone wants to go to law over your tunic, hand him over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service from one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who asks of you and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let me begin by sharing with you a story uh, from South Africa during the time of apartheid. And I hope all of you know exactly what that is. White Afrikaner soldiers show with bulldozers upon a group of poor black South African women living in a squatter's village. And they say to them with these bulldozers, unless you, we are going to bulldoze your village, you have two minutes, two minutes to get all your, your possessions and get out. So what are these women supposed to do? Their men are out working for slave wages someplace. Should they somehow use guns and violence if they even had a chance at guns and violence, which probably they didn't, should they just give in? And in two minutes, their homes, such as they were, were going to be absolutely destroyed. So what should these women do? Now, here's the dip. They knew the puritanical attitudes of these Dutch Reformed Africaners. It's interesting how puritanical they were about sex, but they seemed to find have no problems whatsoever in, in enslaving an entire group of people. Well, anyway, so what they did, they stood in front of the bulldozers and they took all their clothes off. All their clothes off. And these soldiers just stood there with their eyes bugging out of their heads. They get back in their bulldozers and they drive away. And the women absolutely saved their village. Make sense? Probably this might be the most unpopular gospel reading in the New Testament because it seems to be saying that forgiveness means being a doormat. Uh, if someone hits you in the right cheek, turn to the other cheek. Someone go, wants your coat, give them your underwear. I mean, how ridiculous is all of this? But the key verse in all of this is verse 39, which says, Do not resist an evildoer. More literally, it says, don't resist violently an evildoer. And I want to share with you a little bit from this book by the Lens. Don't forgive too soon. And on page eight to this book, it reads this. Thus Jesus telling us not to take an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, not to hit back or otherwise return violence in kind. Instead, when someone tries to abuse and humiliate us, Jesus invites us to find more creative, nonviolent ways to resist and regain our dignity. Even in situations of injustice that we cannot fully change, we can at least maintain our power and choose our response instead of being passive victims. As Gandhi once said, the first principle of nonviolent action is that of non-cooperation with something humiliating. Non-cooperation was something humiliating. Now, there were three examples in our gospel today. For just the time we have right now, let me, let me offer you one. Um, the Israeli soldiers were allowed by law to ask the locals to carry their packs for one mile, by law. And if they forced them to go further than that, there could be a riot. Now, these packs weighed 60 pounds. To carry those things was quite difficult for them. So I want you to imagine some Israeli being commanded by a Roman soldier to carry his pack for one mile. And after the one mile is over, I want you to imagine this, 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 this young Israeli saying, oh, I'd be happy to carry your, your pack two miles. It'd be great. And this soldier knowing that what would happen, you know, if in fact that was the case, and so you can imagine this Roman soldier running after this Israeli, begging for his pack back in some way because he asked to walk with him for two miles. It's a form of protest where this person regains their dignity, a nonviolent form of protest. Does that make sense? Let me tell you another story. True story. Um, this young boy, his name is Kyle. And he is, uh, his, 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 his chore 
at his home, I think kids still have chores sometimes, is to set the table before dinner. Well, Kai doesn't do it. Kyle doesn't do it one night. And so the mother says, Kyle, well, you're supposed to set dinner, you know, the, 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 everything for dinner. And, and uh, she does it herself. The next night, Kyle doesn't do it either. The dad and Kyle's sister all volunteer to set the table. But the mom says, no, 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 we can't do that. Because if we do, then Kyle gets off the hook. He isn't doing what he's supposed to be doing. Dinner time comes, say it's five o'clock. Mom has spaghetti that night. The table is not set. Table kind of like this. Table's not set. There's dad, there's sister, there's Kyle, there's mom. She comes over and she gets the spaghetti and she just slaps it right on the table. Then she slaps, no dishes, by the way, no silverware. Slaps some uh, um, um, spaghetti sauce on top, right on the table. Salad on top of that with some salad dressing. Puts it on top of that and says, enjoy dinner. And everyone, especially Kyle, is looking at that. It's like, wow, what the heck just happened here with all this? And so from that lesson, Kyle now realizes that he is responsible to set the table before dinner each night. That's his job. No one else is going to take it. And if he doesn't do it, this is what's going to happen. I hope that makes the point a little bit. We're, we're not supposed to be doormats. We're not supposed to just give in when people or slap us one cheek and then turn the other one. We're, we're supposed to be somehow or other, whenever these difficult things happen to us, we're supposed to be protesting them, but in a nonviolent way, because violence begets violence begets violence, as we all know. And that's what Jesus is trying to say. And remember, remember that this is not just about externals. You would have to be transformed on the inside. Our righteousness must surpass that of the scribes and Pharisees for us to do this. So remember, remember that. So here's my questions for today. Does this help you understand the gospel a little bit better? I have a second question. Can you see yourself protect, protesting in such a nonviolent way? So God bless you, folks. Thanks for joining me. See you again tomorrow for our Liturgy of the Word. And tomorrow is our Unlock Conference uh, here in the church. And so... Pray for us. Pray that uh, it's a good conference and that people will go away kind of enlightened for new ways in which we can grow as a church. Thank you for joining me. Goodbye now.